You ready for this? I've never been more ready for anything in my whole life. The movie is basically a series of memories, of dreams, and nightmares. Everything we're doing is told through the perspective of a 19-year-old girl, remembering the best moments of her life, you know, her first sexual experience, the first time she realized she was in love, the first time she realized someone was beautiful, the first time she understood that a young man thought she was beautiful, and the worst moments in her life. There's something I gotta tell you. James Baldwin is all about the interior voice. And so I was trying to find a way, how can I translate three pages of James Baldwin's interior um, sort of voice, interior monologue, interior feelings, and interior spirituality into sounds and images. And it's a literary adaptation. Let's treat the theater like it's the inside of someone's head reading a novel. And so the screen is here, the speakers are all around. I want to surround you. And occasionally, I want you to have to look directly into the eyes of the characters. That child was born of sin. That child... It's your grandchild. The great thing about Baldwin is there is so much in that book. He is so vivid, so descriptive, um, that as an artist, as an actor, for me, that's like, you know, it's, it's a joy to have that sort of source material. So I looked at those moments um, to sort of just use my internal dialogue, everything that wasn't being said in the film, you know, perhaps through words, maybe it was gonna be now said through our eyes. So many of these issues that Mr. Baldwin was writing towards have still not been addressed. They're still very prevalent today. It's all just about systems and how they feed themselves and feed themselves. It's happening 45 years ago, still very much happening today. Over there and over here, it's happening here too. For the psychology of, of, of young men watching this, you know, they understand that you know, often in cinema and art, we have a very limited perspective and scope of what a black man looks like, what black male masculinity looks like. And now we're getting to see that, you know, black men look like artists, they look like sculptors, they look like Fani, they, 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 they love, um, you know, they have brothers who they care for and who they lean on. Mr. Baldwin had a few different voices he spoke in, romance, sensuality, interpersonal relationships, and then the other voice that was just as obsessed uh, with systemic injustice, uh, with American society, the ways in which those things disenfranchise the lives and souls of black folks. And I felt like between, through the story of Tish and Fani and their families, and this ordeal that they face, he was speaking with both voices at the same time. It was perfectly fused. And I thought, this is the Baldwin I want to bring to the screen. Beyonce.